writing is an umbrella term for anybody who works to communicate the principles of clinical research in regulatory documents or other communications materials. I myself am a medical communications writer. I write a variety of documents that highlight the benefits and risks of pharmaceutical products, including journal articles and Congress materials. But there's a whole arm of medical writing that produces component modules of the application dossier for the registration of medicines in different countries. These writers work in regulatory affairs and they help pharma companies prepare documents to navigate through the increasingly complex processes of clinical trials and regulatory procedures. So today we're going to look at exactly what regulatory medical writers do. Hi, I'm Vicky Sherwood, author of the Biomed Badass blog and host of the YouTube channel where we discuss all things career related for STEM professionals working in academia and beyond. Today I'm talking to Vera Chan, host of the popular YouTube channel PhD Coffee Time and regulatory writer in the pharma industry. I interviewed Vera to gain a better understanding of what it's like to work as a writer in regulatory affairs. So let's get started. If you're interested in a career in medical writing, you need to prove to employers that you have the core skills to present clinical research data in a clear and concise way. The most common way that employers assess this is through a writing test, which is an integral part of the interview process for the majority of medical writing roles. So what are employers looking for from a medical writing test? And how do you know what to include to ensure that you make a good impression on prospective employers? This can be tricky to answer if you're not yet familiar with writing test best practice. So to help address this, I've prepared a checklist of key things that you'll need to consider when preparing a medical writing test. To get a copy of this checklist, just head over to my site for a free download. You'll also receive regular updates on support for your career transitions, working in pharma and scientific and medical writing careers. Hi Vera, thanks for coming. Nice to have you on the show again. Thank you for having me again, Vicky. And uh, I prepare my coffee as well to, uh, oh. to share with you. <laughs> me too. Today I want to learn more about your role as a regulatory writer, but why don't we start with how you got into regulatory writing and mm. why you left academia? <laughs> Well, this question makes it sound like it is a flash of a second decision. It's not. <laughs> so I, let me give a re- very short summary how I got um, leaving my last contract when it ended uh, as a postdoc. And then I got actually took a break between as unemployed because I was in France and I have a limitation with visa and I don't speak French fluently. That gave a lot of constraint with my options of finding a career that is non-academic and also in France. So at the time I had to take a lot of informational interviews to people and I found this medical writer at the time uh, she told me everything about regulatory writing she actually found me on LinkedIn and she gave me like this encouragement that I am able to do it if I have written a thesis and I have published many papers she said we are we are exactly what they look for in the job market and I didn't understand how at the time medical writing actually is, is really helpful because I'm from life science PhD background and I can read and write file statistic quite efficiently and I can understand paper and long clinical study report quite efficiently so it makes me a good medical writer yeah so that's a short story your your story resonates with mine because you made that transition largely through networking by the sounds of it which was the same yes. for me yeah <laughs> yes so, big advocate I, I, for networking <laughs> So let me first crack a joke since this is a YouTube video. A pharma company without regulatory affairs equal drug dealer. <laughs> Give that a thought. That is true. Exactly. And you just are dealing drugs, then you are illegal, right? Beside the joke, I think regulatory affairs is basically you're helping the pharmaceutical company to go through all of the required long document or the list of documents and make sure they don't miss anything when they are submitting an application of a clinical clinical trial or application to get a trial on the market like uh, if you have a successful phase 3 trial and you want to put a drug 
on the market, there is a lot of paperwork. And you could imagine if you have a new drug on the market, it's a hugely responsible position. You are trying to inform the public what, how safe is this drug and is this uh, um, helpful for my disease. So this is a long list of justification and document and paperwork. So regulatory affairs help to reduce that pain for pharmaceutical company. It required a type of personality, like you need to be unafraid of reading and writing. You need to be very detail-oriented, really rigorous with processes and not afraid to uh, read guidelines and follow the rules. And for me, I, <laughs> I really like guidelines and rules. So I, <laughs> I don't know, that says a lot about being grown up in an Asian background. Like we like to be told what to do, standing in line. And, and I'm from Hong Kong. Hong Kong people love standing in line. So <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's also a very British trait, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I guess yeah. we're a British colony, so I, yeah. says, I guess we were taught to stand in line by you guys. But yeah, if you were a little OCD, I think you would love regulatory affairs. So personally, I have enrolled in an online training with NIH that was during my unemployment when I had a ton of time. They have like many modules of long lectures and they are run by FDA officer, NIH officer, but it's not essentially targeted to medical writing. It's more on the basis of what is the practical issues of clinical trials. But to me, that was a really important foundation for me because now when I write, I know what I'm writing and what I'm reading. And I think that's a very basic of being a part of a pharmaceutical industry, you want to know the jargon, you want to know the process of data collection, how a patient's experience is collected into a piece of paper called a narrative. And the narrative has dates and these dates become a data point for your analysis. So you have to fully get the sense of the human trial. And for me, I have a basic life scientist. I never had the need of signing any consent form, having any like need of approval to, to test on humans. So there are a lot of paperwork that is a big shock to me in the beginning. Taking a step back and knowing the clinical trial process, how is different phases of trial uh, emphasized, like phase one, two, and three, what are the uh, differences, and knowing the sites that are giving you the guideline and information. And for me, we go to ICH guideline and EMA guideline in Europe, and FDA also writes a lot of guidelines. So it's important to know where to look for the official sources, and guidelines change all the time, so I don't think there is an expert on any topic. Like, they are more experienced people, but there is no one person that can tell you all the information without looking at the guideline. So important skill is to have the patience to read and write and, and to uh, find the right information and make the right decision and take the time to, to do that. It's a very important skill. I think your audience are more PhD and many people who want to transition into medical writing. Just realize what type of value we are bringing. We are helping the company to reduce cost. If you are effective communicator, you, if you are good at making sure people fit in the restricted timeline and giving all the responses on time, you are not meeting the deadline because of human mistake. Then that can be a really expensive mistake. There is like situation mistake, like they have to ask for a lot more than what you have and you can't make up those data. So there's no choice but to pay again. But uh, it, yeah, it is a very expensive uh, decision making process, a responsive process. So it's high stress, it's quite high fast pay work to do. Mm -hmm. It's quite different from academia and quite a shock in the beginning to be. I think for, for most PhD students, this is the biggest bottleneck to get adjusted to the pace of regulatory affairs, be as efficient as you can, and also listen to what is the more prioritized part of the document. It's a very important skill. I think one thing that's come out as well is from you explaining what regulatory affairs writers do is that they follow the process from initial development of the, the product and, you know, into a clinical trial all the way through to, you know, getting this thing launched, right, and getting yeah. approval. So, you know, you see that entire lifespan of that development. Yes. That's quite exciting. I think. <clears throat> yeah, I think so. And I think we have the privilege to see all the most confidential information. To me, that's the very satisfying role to be because then you, you have 
have the effort of a trial, like a phase three trial. You have hundreds of patients, 500, 800 people that participated. And as a writer, you get all of this first-hand data information. And at the lower level, people collecting each of these patient forms, they don't see the big picture. And you are the first person that see the statistic, first person that see what do they all come together and what does that mean? And having that knowledge to effectively communicate how that may imply for the current so-called standard of treatment, when how does that change the standard way of how people are treated with this disease state? I think that's a really helpful awareness <laughs> to have. And to me, as a scientist uh, from training, always crave how can I be more serving the community with a more applied science knowledge. And I think there's nothing more applied than having this role, I think, in my opinion, as a writer and <laughs> like being good at the desk, I think this is a very fulfilling position to be. I completely concur with that because, uh, you know, that seeing that improvement on standard of care is one of the most exciting things about my job because to see that data and know it's going to mean a difference for somebody in their life and hopefully, you know, hundreds of thousands of people worldwide is just really exciting. Well, Vera, that was absolutely fantastic. Thank you. I have learned so much about what medical writers do in regulatory affairs and I just didn't know half of that before I spoke to you today. So I'm sure the viewers will, will be so grateful. I hope they can reach out to you with any questions they might have about breaking into regulatory affairs and medical writing more generally. I, I would like to put just a full disclosure. Like It's like data scientists. There's no one data scientist that know all the processes. So don't be intimidated what I have shared to you. But uh, I would assure you that you may just find yourself landing one of the spectrum of this trial at registration and the process of uh, drug development. You will progress in your career to learn different tasks or higher level tasks. So you're welcome to reach out to me if you have more clarification that you want. Or if you are currently an expert and you're judging what I'm saying, then please come and educate me so I can teach better. Hopefully this is going to do some good or help you get to learn the joy of working as a regulatory affairs expert. That was great. I think you did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. So just to summarise what we've learned from Vera about regulatory affairs. If you want to learn more about regulatory affairs, the best thing to do is to speak to professionals working in this area. Use LinkedIn to find and connect with people. The fastest way to learn about an industry or sector that you're interested in is to talk to the people working there. Regulatory affairs writers need to understand the clinical research data and they need to be organised and detail orientated as well. Vera's tip to study about clinical research processes online also helped me break into medical writing too. Working in regulatory affairs gives you access to highly confidential clinical data. It's a real privilege to see hot off the press clinical research data firsthand and understand what that could mean to patients if the results are positive. This is one of the most exciting aspects of a medical writing career. Regulatory affairs is responsible for obtaining approval and ensuring that approval is maintained for pharmaceutical products. It's a hugely important area to pharma companies and is vast. Just remember, you can't know it all when you're starting out, but your experience will build as your career progresses in regulatory affairs.